pergola plan is kind of going to be built in two different sections. Knock it up into the I'm going to put the lowest point on here, then we will run our boards up over the roof, which is going to be how we're going to keep the water out. We're going to kind of overhang cantilever over the roof line right there. And then we're going to have a double header beam, 2x6 beam right here, double header 2x6 beam in the front because we are spanning a total of 13 feet right there. And then we will cut angle pieces that go in between, connecting between that double header beam in the middle and each end so we kind of break things up and are able to get some good joist hangers in there i'm going to cut everything on the ground with a circular saw because 16 foot boards are really hard to wield around using the miter saw With some help from the wife, we were able to start putting up the two by six untreated boards that are gonna make up the roof of the pergola. There does need to be a slight angle on the outer edge, the edge that's away from the roof, to allow us to get that seven degree or so angle to pitch the water off of this roof. So the wife is holding that angle and it's gonna go up against that board that we just put in place. So we slowly built this pergola frame out from, from the inside out and it is all assembled using two and a half inch Power Pro screws along with five inch Power Pro structural screws that are all driven with an impact gun and a Torx bit. They're really, really fantastic compared to the older style of using lags. In the intro, I mentioned two double header portions of this pergola roof, and we changed halfway through because we were short on boards. So the cantilevered portion has a double header, and the middle where the roof supports are gonna join together, right over the middle of the room, is only gonna be a single board. You saw us use a board to hold things in place while we were moving things around earlier. It's a really handy way if something's kind of heavy, kind of awkward, maybe you're working by yourself. Right here, we're actually going to bring a board up that needs uh, a hanger here because this is a, a double header right here. So to hold it in place while we do the hanger, we're going to use the clamp kind of catty cornered so the bottom's sticking out more so we can just lay the thing right in here and take a little bit of the weight off. What do you want? Shush. Rusty? Rusty? No. Now it is time to put that centerpiece that goes across the middle of what is going to be the screened in porch. We did screw into the board from the outside and then we did go back and add 90 degree brackets on all four sides of this board. Once all the outer support is done, it was time to cut all of the boards that go inside. I don't know, do you call these joists? Let me know in the comments down below. They're the equivalent of what a joist would be for a floor, but this is kind of on a cantilevered roof. Anyway, cut them all to length on the miter saw. They're all the same. That board that we put in the middle is exactly in the middle, so these can all be the same length. Cut them all, and then it was time to go up there and add brackets into place. These are your typical joist hanger brackets. They are mounted on both sides of these joist boards on either side of the frame and we put them in place and then I was able to very quickly go through and just drop all those boards that we cut right into those brackets and then I did go back and use two and a half inch deck screws Torx driven obviously and fasten them firmly into place and as I was adding more and more stuff to this pergola it got more and more sturdy with no wobble which is really fantastic And 
now it is time to add all of the purlins which will support the Undura premium roofing panels that we're going to use on top of this pergola. Much easier to cut these on the ground, so I just lifted them up using the tractor, cut them all to length with the circular saw, which I find for boards this big is much easier than using the miter saw. Then I lifted them up, make the tractor do the hard work, and put all of these boards on top of the frame of the pergola so far. Then I was able to climb up there and add them in the appropriate lengths that I needed so that I could screw through the Undura Premium embossment to fasten the panels into place. Now, you'll see a couple of diagonal pieces. I put them in there thinking that that would make it much more sturdy. It did help, but it did make it look a tiny bit wonky. Alrighty, as you can see behind me, we got some white on the outside of the frame of the pergola. I painted that white because we're going to do underneath and I didn't want to have to deal with not hitting the Undura Premium panel. I'm going to take one of the panels, which happens to be brown, I'm going to cut every corrugation there. I need one, three, six of them to go down both sides of the pergola. We will put them up and we'll shoot a couple screws through the side and then the panels are going to go on the top. And I think, or at least I hope, that I laid out the purlins in such a way that we won't have to cut any panels. We're going to do a third overlap, a very heavy overlap, because this is a relatively shallow pitch, and we want to make sure that no water gets up. So we're going to do about a third overlap, and we're going to do a two corrugation overlap as well. That should work out perfect where we don't have to do any cutting, and we will have the embossment so that we can have our screws nice and straight across the pergola. That single corrugation that we cut out of the single panel was to wrap over the edge so that you would cover the gap of the purlin and not allow any water to blow through the side. It worked great. We laid these into place and then we went right through and put the panels right on top of them. And this video has been brought by Angeli North America and one of their products are their Undura Premium Series panels. We have used a bunch of these panels before on various different projects and they are fantastic. And after putting this roof up, we have experienced a tornado and we have experienced 80 miles an hour wind. So I can attest that this stuff is sturdy and holds down if you install it properly. As mentioned, we did install our panels with a very heavy overlap and that's because we're at the minimum pitch and we wanted to make sure water didn't flow back up into the panel overlaps. And then we used the Anduline foam strips, closer strips that go in between all the corrugations. They do have holes in them, which we fill in later to stop mosquitoes. But if you were installing this on an actual roof, you would want those holes for ventilation. And then, so I didn't squash any of the corrugation, I laid some 2x4s so that I could walk up on top of the roof, fasten the panels into place using the Andura Premium hex head screw now. They match the color that you choose. There are various colors of the Andura Premium panel, and it all goes in place so very, very easily compared to shingles. I really, really like this product. I highly encourage you guys to check them out on their website, and you can get the Andura series of products at your local Lowe's retailer. We already put the foam closure strips from Anduline up here, which would be great for stopping birds if we needed some airflow through here. But this is obviously a screened in porch, so we can block this right up. So I'm going to be using some great stuff foam because we are going to paint this and it will all look uniform to make sure that we stop mosquitoes from getting through those holes. In the early stages of planning for this build, I always figured that I would put something white on the bottom of the Endura panels to make it white in the room. I wasn't sure if I was going to install the Tuftex panels that we'll use later underneath the roof or if I was going to paint it. But in the end, I decided to go with my favorite method of applying any finish and that was to spray it. And we just used an exterior grade white paint and it covered fantastically. We did use about four gallons in the square footage of the room but it did cover very very well and it went up relatively quickly and as you can see in this last panning shot it really looks fantastic and it made some of those slightly wonky looking diagonal boards that i mentioned earlier disappear into the upper framework of the pergola and it looks great and i do gotta say after screwing down the endura premium panels this thing is rock solid as i mentioned we got 80 mile an hour wind and a tornado and this thing hasn't moved in the least bit now it is time to install the knee wall. Now you might ask, why a knee wall and why use the Undura Tuftex 
polycarbonate panels in the bottom. Well, we could have gone screen all the way down, but we do have kids and we have animals and I was worried that they would just damage the screens before we could get any use and relaxation out of them. So I wanted to go with a knee wall of sorts and I really, really like these polycarbonate panels. A, because it's not wood and it's not going to rot out over time and won't need any maintenance. And as the sun goes down and it gets a little bit darker at night or in the morning, these panels have a property that seems to kind of diffuse the light and amplify it in the room. And it, it looks awesome. We used these on our shed build back in the day. And as it gets towards sunset, it actually lights up the shed very, very well. And I wanted to have that aspect in the screened in porch here. So we added some supports that were screwed into the deck and then a board across the top using proper structural brackets and lots of power pro screws and that was the framework to screw the panels the tough dex panels on the inside and the outside of the knee wall and then we're going to cap it in place with a piece of the armadillo 2x4 composite decking now again this is the tough dex polycarbonate product from Onduline north america just like the Andura panels you can find this at your local Lowe's and obviously you can use the link in the description below to find out more about this product and to look through all of the installation manuals and specs which are very very thorough. Here you can see the overlap that I went with and boy does this thing look great. It does have the white closure strips underneath to prevent the panel from squashing down and then they have white hex headed screws with a vinyl strip underneath to prevent any water going through them and it looks great. Super, super easy to cut this product just like the Endura Premium Asphalt panels, especially using a razor blade or a utility knife. You score it and then snap it and you are all set. Diagonally cutting them with the circular saw is a little bit tricky, but we talk more about that in a minute. Then the armadillo decking 2x4 which is cut into place. You do want to make sure you screw in countersink, especially if you're using off-the-shelf screws versus the star-worn screws that are made for this product. I was out of them, so I was using the PowerPro hardware. And we worked late into the night many times building this deck, as you can see right here. As we have been sitting here enjoying the deck and thinking about a couple things that we need to do for the screen and porch, I have decided or come up with the fact that we need a little bit more blocking on here for a couple of reasons. We want to put some soffit in here using the same Andura Tough Decks and that will kind of give us that mosquito proofing on the outside without doing anything weird. It'll be nice and clean using the Tough Decks and then this will also give us a good anchoring point on the top there to make sure our screens stay nice and tight with that screen on there so they don't come flapping in the wind and prevent some tearing. So we're going to add some blocking. We've got to get some paint up there. Maybe we'll get some soffit up there. It's going to be a good time. Ethan and I were able to quickly put that extra blocking into place and we had to add one more structural area for putting the screened in door in place. This was just bolted down to the decking as we did before and then the vertical support was connected to that with the appropriate brackets and it went up into the blocking of the pergola roof. We put up the unfinished screen door just so we could have it up as soon as we possibly could. Obviously I went back, redid the screen on this to match the giant screens that we did in a previous video. I have soffit going along here, I have soffit dropping down here, I'm going to have soffit going under here and this is going to provide our hopeful mosquito proofing of this kind of wonky area. Otherwise, I would have had to put some sort of screening in here and I couldn't wrap my head around how I was going to do that. So we're just going to go with the Onduline Tough Decks.
the Onduline Tuftex polycarbonate panels can be installed into any of your typical style vinyl J channel. It's time to cut the Ondura Tuftex panels that we're going to use for the soffit up top there. And in my experience cutting this stuff, you want a good straight edge. This is something that I made myself. And you want a circular saw blade with a very high tooth count. Not sure if you can see this one. I don't even know how high it is. It is 140 tooth. You gotta make sure you go nice and slow so you don't bog your saw down. But with a fine, fine tooth blade like this, it's not gonna catch like it has in the past and jump on you and make it so you have to change your pants. This works best. Once the Tuftex panels were cut, they were very easy to pop into place into that J channel that we had previously cut. Now, there are some portions that I had to cut around 2x4s to make sure we got the tightest fit possible, as this is a mosquito barrier more than anything, but not a big deal using the tin snips or a utility knife in the appropriate areas. We did use the same Tuftex products for the outer soffit of the pergola roof and again this looks great and it provides that mosquito barrier up into the structure frame of the joist so that no mosquitoes can fly through. I did cover building these giant screens in a separate video, which you can find in the video card or down in the description below. They were a big screen set, very easy to build, and I go through in high detail how to do that in a separate video. This very irregular interface between the screens, which was a 2x4, and the siding. So we're filling it with great stuff, foam. We'll go ahead and cut that, and then we'll paint it white to match the frame of the screen and porch. soccer want to caulk all the way around the frame i'm using this dap extreme stretch this is the first project i've really used it on but uh it looks better than the rest of dap's products Well, that is a wrap right there on the pergola slash screened in porch portion of the deck. Now, the deck looks awesome. Yeah, I might be a little bit biased, but this is certainly the most used portion of the entire thing. We're out there every evening enjoying the quiet countryside, staying dry, listening to the rain with no mosquitoes. Is pretty awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button as it helps us out and gets this video in front of more eyes. There's one more video finishing up the deck, doing the railing, installing all the fascia and lattice to wrap up this deck build. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. I'm DIY Tyler. Thanks to Ondura North America for sponsoring this video. And you guys have a good one.